Now, you'll find that in my works, at least, especially ones that are connected to my Extreme Existence uh, title, for the most part, they are all connected by a certain thread, so to speak. And one of those is that there's causality, the laws of reality, and there are certain laws that cannot be broken, and there are certain laws that are broken daily, by regular people even sometimes. It all depends on the world that I'm doing and the story that I'm trying to convey. In this sense, in this one, this guy, let's not make this part of my extreme existence multiverse, but rather just a standalone. In that case, this creature is just a creature from the outer realms. It's from the edge of existence that has been devouring its way into this world. But this world, it feels something different here. And what it felt was... The later on in the future, and of course, if you want to argue that time and space means nothing to a creature like this, it, it doesn't matter then. In that case, it knew of the coming of the hero and the devil king and their strange connection. Now, I've said this multiple times about this strange connection. I need to point out that that is very much so the a solid basis for what the story is about. Especially because later on, after the, the gang gets back together again, and the hero reclaims the, 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 the fucking holy sword, and his companions are all together, and they actually get the fourth member, the fifth member representing darkness, no, representing light, will be the double king. And representing darkness has always been the hero. Ha! Yeet! So they needed all six, uh, yeah, all six of them together to face the the king, the actual the actual bad guy. So you feel me on this? Is this shit good or what? That's what's up. All right, all right, I like that shit. Let's keep going. Let's go further. When it comes to bloodlines and families, uh, there's one thing I really do want to point out, and that's it shouldn't uh, until you publish once again. It should never be the end all be all. But even if you're a gardener. You, a gardening type, remember that from last season? As a callback, friends, you might want to consider keeping track of the genealogical records of your characters. If you are going to place a lot of emphasis on bloodline, whether it be royal or not, maybe it's the blood of a hero or the blood of a demigod, especially in the blood of a demigod, you're going to want to know who they begat and who they came from. That shit is important to your story. I'm serious. You'll, you'll just want to know who, who gets who, who can get with who, and who will get with who. And if you write some real freaky deeks, who got with who and what happened from them, especially if it's inside your family. Warning. I don't mind incest. I just don't like incest in my family. I like incest in your family. I want to get down with that. Oh, you got a sister? She look as cute as you, bro. Let's get on it, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm saying. Y'all know I got some kinks. Y'all know I got some shit in my life. I'm just saying. I ain't cool with incest in my family. Incest in your family. But also, they got to be cute. They got to be hot. Don't be kidding me up talking about, dude, my mom is so hot. And I check it out and she ugly as a motherfucker, man. No, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to friend zone a bitch because of that shit. I don't want to friend zone you because of that shit. You're all like, wow, Thomas, we're going to get in a three way with my mom. And I'm like, bruh, yo, no, your mom looks like a walrus. Fuck that shit. Tell her to file that teeth down, nigga. No. Your mama look like Freddy Krueger. Fuck that shit. No. In before people are trying to get on me about, oh, you're body shaming or you're fucking face shaming, burn shaming, whatever the fuck. I'd like to point out that uh, Katawa Shoujo is the shiznits. I didn't get with Bacon at first. I got the uh, deaf chick first because mm, I want to make her go, ah. So, yeah. <laughs> I just want I just want to get that noise. Not to mention, mm, deaf girl, delicious. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I've blown too much about that shit. So suffice it to say, <laughs> if you're writing some freaky deeks, you're definitely going to want to keep genealogical records of your own characters. And besides, it's good practice, even if you're an engineer and you already do shit like that. I'm just saying it's good practice. Go ahead and get it on, man. Hell, sometimes you can make the story based around that. Now, I'm not. Not with this one. Not with... The devil's hand? The devil? Maybe not the devil's anything. Let's just, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. On the planet Melusine. Can you imagine the steampunk dark matrix? Do you remember um, the, pre the animatrix? And they were going over the history of the shit that happened before the Matrix started. And it was like that, that the darkness, the war in the dark. I love that shit. We should have something like that in this one. In fact, we will. We do now. Uh, with the theme song of Time of the Dark by Broke's Helm. Because fuck yeah. I can see full plate niggas riding steam powered fucking metal horses and shit. Ooh, jet black horses just 
steam melting niggas flesh off just yeah that's the shit but there's been peace for about at least 20 years so just saying in the king's time they have conducted war against other races and other races are hell, not out of stale have them out of stalemate yeah have them out of stalemate through sheer obscene magic power alone the king cannot reveal that he has this entity that he's this entity with like God forsaken power because the laws of reality causality will not allow him to just overboard go overpowered on a motherfucker and just devour the world he has to take it over <gasps> that explains why there's so much land that the humans have been collecting and shit expanding um because of this though the human lands aren't really a melting pot exactly in fact you'll find a lo not a lot of crossbreeds because of this unless you leave the human lands Everyone else in the world, that in the known world, know that something's going on, that the humans have been encroaching on their territory and expanding and demanding and making you know, uneven trades, all, concessions. They've been having to concede just to survive in some cases. Now, the elves don't need to. The elves have their, have their floating castles and whatnot. Floating castles in the sky. And you also got um, the, the dwarven, the underground types don't really care. And exactly until the humans start encroaching on their territory, mining and shit. In which case they will dive down deeper and deeper into, into the ground. So I'm just saying, there's that idea too. When it comes down to uh, the humans and the bloodlines and families, the only thing we really need to be aware of at this point in time is the bloodline of the king. Um, as well as the certain ruling elites and nobles. But I'm not really going to even touch upon that. That's not really that important for this story. Now, I do have one series, uh, The Generalist, in fact, where it is important, very important, the bloodline of the Todds, the Frank, uh, Frank Todd. And it's not even that his bloodline is that important, but rather his family. Uh, I'm not going to ruin too much. There is no chosen one and exactly no prophecy about Frank Todd, but it is important that you know who and what his family is, what his father has done, what his who his mother was, and why this is important to the series. So I can't just say why. That would be giving away too much at this point. Spoilers. But later on, when that comes up, you guys will check it out, and hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully you'll, you'll look back on this and be like, oh shit, he was right. So... In your storyline, is bloodline and family that important? Or what kind of people do you have going on? Is it a world of communism or is it, a, is it something more closer to what we have nowadays? Is it something completely different? Do let me know in the comments below, by all means. If for this particular tale that we're building here, that is a... Uh, yeah, we're gonna just... Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep... We're just gonna pay more attention to the fact that uh, it's something to mention but it's not that important. Just saying. So, come the next episode, we're going to be checking out, uh, I don't know, let's do Rise and Fall of Kingdoms. This is Haymakers and Hellhounds, Season 0, World Building. I am Thomas Duder, author of The Things.